what an excellent quarter it has been from m and m and how well has it been received from the equity markets as well on closing bell the stock was up five and a quarter percent uh, so let's uh, talk a little bit more about how the quarter gone by was what's the visibility going forward i have with me rajesh shetty rikar from m and m joining in at the show rajesh hi great to have you on the show what an excellent performance has been and how well it's been received by the market but let's first uh, address the elephant in the room rajesh and more the near term phenomena the production target for november is what the market would like to know um and what happens to the semiconductor chip shortage rajesh when can we expect a bounce back coming in here uh aisha aisha thanks for the pleasure to be with you and especially you know looking at the way stock has moved as you said based on our result uh it the results have been very heartening the pat before <laughs> exceptional income for the quarter has been up 43% and uh we have seen a consolidated quarter to pat uh hence go up like 214% so uh after ei mm-hmm. so it has been a very very strong uh, performance across the group uh not just the mnm limited uh so it's good to be with you on the back of such numbers uh the elephant in the room which is the semiconductor shortage we believe that uh, the quarter 2 was really bad i mean it was as bad as it can get and you know just to bring it alive for you all of that disruption was caused by a 3 dollar chip uh, which was made in uh, malaysia and it is a very basic commodity kind of chip uh, but because malaysia went into a major lockdown for almost 3 to 4 weeks mm. plants were completely shut the semiconductor plants uh, you saw this kind of a shortage which was completely unanticipated and very hopefully something is not going to repeat itself again we are seeing some kind of normalcy come back october november and hopefully we will come back uh, to levels at least at which we were uh, before the quarter to got as bad as it was fortunately for us demand is very strong and we are doing everything to ramp up and leverage the full opportunity that we are seeing on the auto demand side very strong bookings as you know of 700 low and thar continues to remain strong with lots of new bookings coming in every month and neo bolero neo was a very good launch as well which uh, again is doing very well and the xuv 3 so we're seeing a very strong portfolio uh, at play at the moment so hopefully we will see this uh, behind us there is going to be a constraint for the next uh, few quarters and that's hopefully not going to be as bad but it's not going to be an unconstrained semiconductor supply situation So this was on the supply side, but what happens, Rajesh, to the cost inflation that you guys are facing? You know, both on the base metal front and as well as crude oil, etc. As well, that coupled with uh, you know an uptick in freight costs uh, on your imported uh, components. Yeah, so clearly it's an economy driven by inflation. At like you rightly said, commodities have we've seen unprecedented uh, commodity inflation in the last yeah. 15 months. uh freight inflation of the kind not seen especially global freight rates have gone up almost 3 to 5 times so clearly it's an inf- inflation led economy we've tried to take uh, aggressive price increases uh but it is an inflation led economy at this point of time the our learning out of the commodity inflation cycle in the past has been that uh, you know significant inflation of commodities does correct itself in the next cycle and we would expect that in the next 3 uh, year cycle i'm talking a little long term at the moment uh, there would be a correction downward and things would uh, equalize and you know when that happens it makes things much easier for me margin and performance profit performance management than it is when you see this kind of inflation uh, but we've taken all the actions that we can very strong uh, control on costs and we've taken price increases pretty aggressively okay let's pick up the business now vertical by vertical and let's talk a little bit long term then rajesh and when i look at the farm segment uh, you know performance you're sitting at a market share of about 40% that's also uh, you know again of nearly about 2% that one has seen your global subsidiaries the pbit is already in excess of 100 crore rupees as of the second quarter at the core you've got the launch of uh, uvotech plus and your exports have been the second highest in second quarter how do you plan to take or scale up the business going forward i mean what can you do more to try and better this performance 
Uh, well, Aisha, that's a very interesting question and gives me a segue into what we think is the biggest growth driver on the farm equipment side. And I'm going to take a minute or two to play that out. And that's the farm machinery business. For viewers who are not very clear about the difference, uh, farm machinery are uh, machineries outside of tractors. There are two types of farm machines. Those which get attached onto a tractor and those we call self-propelled, which don't need a tractor as the prime mover. Uh, globally, if you look at it, farm machines are twice the size of tractors. And in India, it's reverse. Right? So for example, if we're doing 20,000 crores of tractors, our farm machine re revenue at this point of time in India is just 500 crores. Uh, so, so, and we are subscale by way of market share as well. Uh, our market share is less than 10%. So for a business where in tractors, we have a 40% plus market share, as you said, clearly we have a market share upside. We have an industry growth upside. And we hence believe that we have an opportunity to scale up our farm machinery business by 2027, 10 times. Uh, so we think that's the big growth opportunity. That's something we're going to get behind. We're planning 15 new products there, uh, open to acquisitions, partnerships, alliances to enable that growth, and also work around financing, leasing, rental models, all of that to make this happen. So that we think in the domestic market is going to be a very big growth driver for us. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. When I talk about tractors in specific, uh, you know, I can see that the sales volumes have declined, but that's because you're working with a very high base as well. How is the growth and margin outlook looking like for not today, tomorrow, but say two to three years hence? Uh, also, there is a lot of competition building as well in this segment. So how is it that you plan to maintain your market share, if not better it further? Yeah, so several questions out there. Let me try and take them one by one. Uh, <sighs> Maybe the market share question first. Uh, we are looking at a very aggressive product strategy. We have a very strong sure. channel. Uh, we will strengthen ourselves. You just spoke about the UVOT new UVOT tech launch. Uh, it's a fabulous product, very well featured at a very good price. And multiple other new initiatives that you will hear on. Uh, we've shared some of them in the uh, deck by way of you know our communication to the media and uh, analysts by way of what we are planning to put out there by way of our product strategy. Just K2 platform project has four platforms, 37 new products. Uh, it's a global global set of four platforms. So we are, we are looking at a very aggressive uh, product strategy to help us uh, gain market share. Uh, the issue of uh, managing margins, and you made a point about quarter two volumes. Uh, quarter two volumes is a function of two things. One is, of course, the base and a shift in season. Uh, typically, seasons are linked to start of Navratra. Last year, Navratra started in September, so you started seeing the season in quarter two. This year, Navratras were in October, so you see the season in quarter three. But they're all on high base. So I basically would say don't look at quarter two, quarter three uh, this year because of either base or seasons. Uh, the margin issue is something that we are going to have to uh, deal with by way of managing cost better. And we have to put a uh, ruthless focus on costs uh, to make sure that we are able to manage uh, margins as we go forward. Okay. You know, the other thing before we move to the passenger vehicles, you in your um, you know presentation earlier today, or rather earlier yesterday to the media and the analyst fraternity, also talked about turning around your farm equipment subsidiaries. Help us understand what exactly is the game plan here. Uh, so, you know, one of the reasons we were constrained by way of either our performance delivery on the farm equipment or our ability to grow was that we had got into a bunch of turnaround situations on mm -hmm. our global subsidiaries. Our U.S. business needed a bit of cleaning up. Turkey went through a down cycle, so on and so forth. So we've taken over the last uh, uh, 18 to 24 months very strong actions to correct that. And from a set of companies which were losing up to 800 crores uh, uh, you know, in the past years, we now have moved uh, into creating five consecutive break, uh, profitable quarters for our international subs. And the last two have been 100 crore plus. So we believe that this business now, uh, these businesses are now consolidated. It allows us to think about driving growth. 
Hmm. Okay, fair point. Let's talk about what's happening within the auto segment now. And you know, uh, talking about numbers here, you're already seeing massive bookings for XUV 700. Your exports have seen almost an 86% surge uh, on a year-in-year -year basis. I can see that the open booking numbers as well are very high. But what really is the visibility and where do you garner more growth, say, in the next two to three years? Will it have to be a strong EV pipeline, which is going to take you into the next trajectory? Yeah, so Aisha, this is something that we've been working on over the last year and a half. One is a very focused brand position. Uh, we want our brand to stand for our heritage uh, and we call that authentic SUVs. Uh, authentic SUVs which have an unmissable presence with adventure capability. Mm. So the portfolio as you can see is evolving to deliver and make mm. that happen. As we think about electric uh, going forward, mm. that would follow the same brand ethos. Uh, we've driven a brand transformation by way of bringing in a new logo for our SUV portfolio. And we call that the Twin Peaks logo. That's got very well accepted. You see that first on the oh, SUV 700. Uh, we also are moving to new dealer uh, signages to bring alive the new visual identity. So a lot of brand transformation work by way of the way we position, the way we bring out a product portfolio to match that positioning. And uh, the whole EV strategy, where we're looking at uh, eight new uh, SUVs, which will be electric uh, over the next four to five years. You know, we had Tata Motors raise about a billion dollars for their EV vertical. Uh, there are news reports that TVS Motors may be looking at a $500 million funding. Are you up next for some EV funding or are you, you've got sufficient cash in your balance sheets? No, Aisha, we are open to all options. Uh, so, you know, for us, it's never say no. Uh, we will look at all options mm. which help us prepare ourselves well for the future. Mm. And uh, so we are open to any option to get funding mm. uh, and uh, alliances, tie-ups to prepare us for uh, a robust future. Mm. Mm. So if one has to look ahead say next two to three years is it going to be farm is it going to be lcbs suvs lmms or you think evs is, which is going to be the larger piece of your revenue pie well in the next uh, three to five years uh, i don't think ev will be a significant share uh, what we right now anticipate is evs will be in the region of 20 percent mm. uh, of the total suv space uh, by the year 2027. Now that could be a little higher mm. depending on how costs evolve and how charging infrastructure mm. plays out. Uh, but we don't think that could be much higher. So big opportunity on the farm mm. side. It's a very profitable business. Uh, we think the SUV space and it's really growing very fast as you can see in the last uh, year and a half or two will continue to grow very rapidly and we are very well placed to leverage that. Mm. Uh, we would want to be number one in the core SUV space. We've defined core SUV as in a certain way, which is permissive enough and competitive enough. And we believe that's about 70% of the total UV market. And we want to be number one in that. So uh, we, we have a very strong mm. set of plans to grow multiple business verticals. And we're structured in a way that, you know, each of these business verticals has a business head and uh, they drive their own growth paths so we're well structured to be able to deliver growth in all of these verticals uh, Rajesh you know I must laud you because not many companies uh, do that but you've clearly mentioned that the focus is going to be on ROCE and the focus is also going to be on cost optimization as well help us understand what's the plan that you've actually outlaid to try and bring both these parameters or forces together yeah, so clearly, you know, ROC is very important to us as a business outcome. And that's a measure of how well we are doing. Uh, to drive ROC, it's, of course, we need successful products. But more than successful products, uh, we have to have investments which are well optimized. A lot of our strategy in the auto side is going to be leveraging platform commonality and platform configurability. Uh, which will help us optimize investments and drive returns. Uh, we are also going to be in product segments which are very 
you know, specific, specialized and niche, but we think large enough uh, to get returns. Uh, we've also put out for the first time, as you said, a target of 3% year on year cost reduction in cost as a percentage of revenue. Uh, so uh, that's that's something that we'll work on mm. across multiple areas, uh, the way we optimize our material costs, the way we uh, leverage platforms and drive commonality and volume scale. Mm. And uh, in the way we optimize manpower productivity, we drive marketing costs down uh, through, you know, new age marketing and variety of other initiatives. So, yes, that is something we, we believe is a very important part of managing margins while we optimize cost of capital. Mm. Okay. Rajesh, great to have you on the show and congratulations once again on an excellent quarter. Thank you, Aisha. It was lovely with, to be with you here today.